fellow artists, my name is Lauren, I'm the artist behind Potato Art Studios, and in today's video I'll be explaining to you my plans for Inktober, some of my goals, how I'm planning for Inktober, and the materials I'm planning on using. So if you're interested in hearing on about what I have in store for myself for Inktober, just keep on watching. As always, there will be timestamps down below. If you want to skip ahead to a specific section, you can go right ahead. Um, I know most of you are probably more interested in the materials, so I will have all of the materials that I'm planning on using linked down below. So if you're not familiar with what Inktober is, basically every day of the month of October, you do a drawing with ink. So I'll leave a link to Jake Parker, who is the creator of Inktober, down below, and you can check out his video. But more specifically, I was inspired by a video that Miriam did on her channel where she explained her process behind how she is preparing for Inktober and how she approaches it. It's always important to have at least a couple goals in mind so that helps direct what you're trying to draw and how much you want to challenge yourself. So depending on how much time you have to dedicate to doing a drawing every day, that kind of determines how much out of your comfort zone you're going to go. I think the goal that most people have is just to gain confidence with drawing with ink. I haven't really done anything ink related since last year's Inktober, so I, I'm pretty rusty, so I'd like to gain some of that confidence back. The second goal I have is to practice ink washes, and especially with larger areas. Um, so if you've ever done watercolor and you've tried to do washes, flat washes, or gradient washes, you know how difficult it can be. So. It's been a very, very long time since I've done watercolor, so I'm going to try and get back into it by just practicing just gray and black ink washes. The third goal I have is to learn how to use Frisket, and I had bought a bottle of Frisket uh, six months ago, but I've just actually never even opened it and haven't even touched it. And if you're not familiar with what Frisket is, it's basically a liquid that you can draw over your paper and that will bind to the paper so it protects the paper that's covered by the frisket so if you were to do an ink wash over that area the frisket prevents the ink from soaking into the areas below it and the fourth goal i have is to learn how to layer with white ink so this is inspired by a person I follow on Instagram, I'm not sure how to pronounce her name, but I'll have her handle on the screen. And she basically does a lot of detail drawings with ink, and she does a lot of layers with ink washes. And so I was inspired by her work to try and experiment with layering on my own drawings. So getting into, I think, the most important part of this video is how I prepped for Inktober. So with this month's Inktober, I decided that for my theme, I was going to focus on working on nature and flowers. So drawing trees, roses, maybe a stream. I like to take pho nature photography, so I had a lot of pictures on my computer I could choose from. And that leads into my second point is I spent this past weekend just going through my old photo album, albums and I pulled about 20 to 30 pictures from my old albums and so that when I'm going through my photos for Inktober every morning I can just open up one folder and I already have my pre-selected photos in that folder. I think a very easy thing to do is to just get caught up in looking on Google for something that looks appealing to you and then you realize it's midnight and you didn't draw anything. So definitely narrowing down the subject matter I'm looking into and pre-selecting a lot of the photos that I think I would want to draw definitely helps. And the last way I'm prepped for Inktober is I went through my closet, pulled out all the supplies I think I would use and just have them stored in one basket. So 
In the morning, I can pull out the basket on my desk, spend half an hour or an hour drawing, and when that's done and dry, I can put everything back and have my desk ready to do other work. So I'm not spending an hour trying to find my pen or trying to find my paper. Everything is in one easy to reach basket. It'll help me save time. Getting into the art supplies, I kind of select did art supplies I was familiar with as my core group of supplies and I also had selected a few fun materials that I wasn't very familiar with for my days where I want to be more adventurous and experiment so it kind of helps I guess jazz up my drawing if I feel like I'm getting bored or in a rut. For these art supplies as a disclaimer I will have Amazon affiliate links down below in the description box. So if you choose to shop using any of the links marked with AMZN, I will receive a small percentage of your total purchase as a commission. If you do not feel comfortable using an affiliate link, you can always just copy the item description and look it up for yourself. So for my core supplies, the first item is the pens. So my pens that I selected are the Faber-Castell Pit pens. And these are waterproof so that they will not bleed once I do ink washes over my drawing. The paper I am using is the Canson Montval watercolor pad. And an important thing I think is worth mentioning is that if you're an artist, you know what, what size you're comfortable with drawing. For me, I really hate drawing in small sketchbooks. I just don't like the feeling of being cramped into a small piece of paper. So I made sure that the drawing notebook I had was at least nine by 12 inches. So I have the freedom to work small if I feel like doing a small drawing, but also have the freedom of drawing larger if that's what I am more comfortable doing. The ink that I'm planning on using for the ink washes is the Yasutomo Black Sumi ink. So you can dilute the sumi ink with water to create different values of gray. The brushes I plan on using for the ink washes are these Princeton Select brushes, which have the golden synthetic bristles at the end and the blue handle. So these are great and affordable brush line that has a lot of spring to it. So it's most suitable for acrylic paint, but I found that I can also use them for watercolors and ink washes as well. If you're a artist on a budget and you're thinking about getting a couple brushes, I would recommend checking out the select brushes. Um, many art stores carry them open stock so you can actually feel the bristles and decide if that brand is something you'd like to look into. The white ink I have is the Dr. PH Martin's Bleed Proof White and you can see here it's a very thick consistency white ink so I have to dilute this ink with water in order for me to draw with it. The nib is the Hero 40 nib and it's a nice flexible nib. I'm not sure if I'll be using this nib at all because I have my pit pens that I mentioned in the beginning. I bought these uh, nibs from paperinkarts.com and this is not sponsored by them at all, but Paper Ink Arts is a website where they specialize in carrying calligraphy items. So if you are thinking about getting into hand lettering, working with script and calligraphy, I would definitely recommend Paper Ink Arts. Their nibs usually are 50 cents to a dollar, so they're very affordable. And I've placed several orders with them and I've been happy with my shopping experience with their uh, website. Some of the supplies that I have selected for fun and for experimentation are the Pearl X pigments. So these pigments are sold individually in jars and also in smaller containers in sets. So I have the Series 2 12 count set and I bought this off of Amazon, so it was about $1.50 per color, and you can of course mix different color pigments together to create new colors. 
Um, I have used them in the past, mixing them in with black ink, and they create really interesting effects. Um, so that's something I might play with. Um, from one of the goals that I had, uh, I mentioned Frisket. So the Frisket I'm using is the Blit brand Liquid Frisket. I'm planning on maybe using these tiny nail art brushes. So these are just something I picked up at the dollar store. Because of the very fine tip, I might use it for maybe doing detail work with the frisket or detail work with some of the inks. Um, I'm not sure yet, but I just have it in this basket. The next item is the speedball cartooning set. So I bought this over a year ago and I just never used it so this would be a great opportunity to use um, some of these nibs and they're a variety of different nibs so i think i'll have a lot of fun playing with them and the last item are these paper packs so in my watercolor pad that i had picked out it only has 20 sheets so that means 11 days i might need to find another paper so i had all of these paper packs i had bought from jerrysartorama.com and i'll leave a link to where you can find them but basically these are try it sample packs so each pack contains between two to four sheets of watercolor paper and so they're a way for you to try a different brand before you buy large sheets or sketchbooks. So depending on the brand and depending on the number of sheets, they cost anywhere between one to three dollars. And if you're curious to see some of my drawings from last Inktober, um, I've dug them out of my closet. So I had done a series with a skeleton, so I just called him Mr. Skeletal. I kind of tried to make a narrative with him so every day he would be doing something different and I was drawing with the Strathmore Art Gain black paper and using the Dr. PH Martin's Bleed Proof White Ink. These are just a few of the drawings and I had a lot of fun drawing, drawing Mr. Skeletal. Um, it was very different from anything I had really done in the past. So if you are planning on doing Inktober this year, let me know in the comments down below what materials you plan on using, um, maybe what subject or theme you're going with. I'm always interested to hear what everyone else has planned for themselves. If this is your first time doing Inktober, I would say don't put a lot of pressure on yourself to do too much too early. I think uh, spending maybe half an hour or an hour a day doing a drawing is very plenty. The main thing is that you practice doing something you're not really familiar with and hopefully that will help you feel more confident as an artist. I would say try not to focus on trying to become the most popular Inktober post. I think Inktober is a personal challenge, not a popularity contest. So if you choose to share your drawings are not. Remember that this is all about personal growth. I don't plan on filming any of my Inktober drawings, but if I do, I'll definitely share it with you on YouTube. I will be posting a slideshow of all of my Inktober drawings at the end of October, early November. So if you're interested in seeing what I end up creating over the course of Inktober, you can subscribe and turn on your notifications. I'll be sharing my drawings on my second Instagram account. So my main Instagram is Potato Art Studios where I post my animal drawings, but for things like Inktober where it doesn't quite fit into what I normally work with, I post it to my second Instagram account, which is Cheesiest Potatoes. So I'll have it on the screen here and also linked down below if you'd like to follow me and I will see you in my next video.